Hello, I'm Sam from Just Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. Not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. Something that I witnessed recently and have witnessed over time and something that I still find very unusual is people in the Goodyear Welted community or the boot community and their dislike and in some cases hate for the humble loafer. But I can't really understand why. Boot guys like leather, they like things that last, they like things with history, things that break in. Some boot guys even like comfortable footwear. These things are things that a loafer can offer you, with comfort being a bonus. Now, in my eyes, the reason why we dislike something is often because of the lack of understanding of that said thing. I thought I would use this as an opportunity to talk about all the great things about loafers, but also to discuss how you might want to start wearing loafers, with the outcome and the goal of this video to perhaps convert you to the ways of the humble outdoor leather slipper. Anyway, let's get into it. The first thing I wanted to quickly say was if your main objection to loafers is that you don't think they look cool, then I have an infinite number of images and videos that I can show you that prove that this isn't true. If as a boot guy, you can embrace looking like a lumberjack in your local CBD, then you can embrace the relaxed, charming elegance that is a pair of loafers. So with that aside, let's get into the things that I like about a good pair of loafers. Let's start off with the first reason that I think you may want to consider a pair of loafers, leather. Leather is responsible for three quarters of the reasons that I enjoy quality footwear. It breaks in, makes the footwear more comfortable, and it lasts a long time. Now a loafer can come in any leather that a boot can, and it can probably come in some that a boot can't. But leather is sort of the universal language of high quality footwear, and in my experience is one of the biggest things that guys like about a new pair of quality boots. And it's this relationship with these boots and with this leather that they grow with the leather over time wearing the boots. As you break in a pair of boots, they give you blisters and pain and suffering, and then all of a sudden you have a pair of boots that you love and are super comfortable. A pair of boots that you look down at with a sort of fondness that you can only get through that suffering that you experience breaking those boots in. You see a scratch on the toe and you remember the time you put it there. It's some good, honest patina, and it's what makes leather fantastic. Luckily, this is the exact same experience and bond that you can expect to experience with a new pair of loafers. Though admittedly, they may be fairly significantly different time period to break a pair of loafers in compared to a pair of boots, they will still provide you with a few battle scars if you're after them. But importantly, that comfortable at home fit that you've come to love in your boots will develop over time. With leather, it will age slowly and gradually and take on a patina. Leather that will last a lifetime. Which brings us to... Another hesitation that I can imagine would be the perceived flimsiness that a loafer can seem to inherit from its simplistic design. Luckily, I can assure you that so long as you choose the right brand to invest in, that a loafer will last you a long time, if not longer than that pair of boots. Don't believe me? Well, let's just think about it. A pair of boots, you walk in the forest, through some streams, up a mountain, and of course you wear them to the grocery store. But a pair of loafers made with the same construction method, let's just say Goodyear welted for this example, possibly the exact same leather, has some advantages that are going to mean that it's going to outlast the boot. Firstly, it's unlikely to come with you on the forest rock or through the streams or up the mountain, but it will definitely be used a lot to the grocery store. This is immediately a stark difference in the overall wear from just general use case. The trade-off is that because they're super comfortable and last forever, that you're going to be tempted to wear these pretty much every day, which may reduce the overall impact of the first point somewhat. Walking around on the pavement also actually wears your soles down surprisingly fast, especially at ever sole, so maybe we'll call this first point moot, but you get the picture. The second point is that loafers have no moving parts. There's no laces or zips or buckles, no places for things to rub and wear and degrade and tear over time. A loafer is slipped on and then it's on. And this means that you'll never have to do things like replace the laces or have any issues with wearing or wearing out because of rubbing or pieces of leather rubbing together or rubbing against each other. So they're made from a cool material, they're going to take some work to break in, but they're likely going to last you a very long time. But what about history? 
Originally inspired by the moccasins worn by Native Americans, the loafer gained popularity among men who sought a relaxed and leisurely footwear option. Its distinguished features include a low heel, no laces, and a snug fit without the need for socks. It was a game changer for those who wanted to ditch the formality of Oxfords and other lace-up shoes and boots without compromising on style. The style itself has had many different forms and functions, but ultimately the history that I'm most interested in is from around about the 1950s onward. In the 1950s, loafers were all the rage amongst the stylish folks. It this is the era of the classic penny loafer, a timeless design that featured a distinctive strap across the vamp and was perfect for showcasing a shiny penny. The iconic brand that dominated this decade was Bass Weegens with their impeccable craftsmanship and their reputation for producing not top notch loafers. By the 1960s, loafers had taken a groovy turn with the tassel loafer. The style boasted decorative tassels on the vamp, adding a touch of flair to any outfit. Gucci was the brand who sort of stole the spotlight in this decade as they introduced their luxuries and fashion forward tassel loafers, which quickly became the symbol of prestige. In the 70s, disco fever hit the scene and loafers weren't far behind. The 70s saw the rise of platform loafers, taking advantage of the era's obsession with height. These chunky sold elevated both the style and the stature, literally, of the wearer. While many brands embraced the trend, the one that stood out to me was Clarks, who are now known for their comfortable and fairly fashion forward footwear. By the 1980s, things were all about excess and the loafers weren't exempt from from the extravagance. Enter the Gucci Horsebit Loafer. The iconic design featured a metal horsebit ornament across the vamp and it exuded sophistication and luxury and still does today. In the 2000s, loafers experienced a resurgence of classic designs, things like the driving moccasin. These loafers featured a rubber pebble sole, making them ideal for gripping onto the pedals while driving. Todd's, the Italian luxury brand, stole the show with their impeccable craftsmanship and iconic driving loafers. While we're still early in the 2020s, we've witnessed a return to classic styles with a sort of modern twist. Loafers with chunky lug soles have made a comeback, blending those sort of traditional chunky elements of the 70s and the more modern style. Brands like Gucci, Salvatore Ferragamo and Churches have been at the forefront of these kind of classic modern fashion trends, capturing the essence of contemporary fashion. And this sort of summarizes the history of the loafer. And let's just say that if there is a style, a design for a loafer that's probably in someone's archives is they've been around for a long time and they've been made in many, many different iterations and styles by many, many different brands. Other than the brands that I've just called attention to specifically for their impact to loafers, the brands themselves aren't all exactly what they started out as, and the modern brands are probably not worth investing in as much as the originals were, but they might be. So I thought I might provide a few brands that were not only around for the creation and origination of loafers, but have histories of their own and today still make products that are worthy of your hard earned foot time. First up is Alden. Since its establishment in 1884, Alden has remained a beacon of traditional shoemaking excellence, the shoes in America, the brand has honed its craft to perfection. With a rich heritage and reputation for durability, Alden continues to be a go-to brand for those seeking high quality, classic and comfortable loafers that transcend the trends and stand the test of time. And I particularly love my pair from them. Of course, up second is Crockett and Jones, founded in 1879, and they've been synonymous with traditional British shoemaking for obviously well over a century. Crockett and Jones loafers exhibit a perfect balance of style, comfort and durability. From their iconic penny loafers to their tassel loafers, each pair represents the brand's unwavering dedication to heritage, craftsmanship, and impeccable design. And again, my pair from them are very, very cool and very, very comfortable. Carmina, a family-owned Spanish brand founded in 1866, is recognized for its fine craftsmanship and dedication to artisanal shoemaking. Carmina offer probably the biggest range of different styles and designs, and obviously they have their custom tool. So if you're looking for something and you can't find it from anyone else, Carmina might be the one to look at. Onto a couple of heavy hitters, we've got Edward Green, which has a rich history dating back to 1890. Edward Green continues to make exquisite loafers and they are, in my opinion, the epitome of luxury and sophistication. They continue to be the pinnacle of excellence in the world of traditional quality loafers. And of course, we can't forget about John Lobb, whose heritage dates back to 1849 and celebrated for their exceptional craftsmanship and particularly in their bespoke footwear, though they have had a large impact on loafers in general and they've created many different styles and designs. Their history is a little bit more complicated because of the whole Paris thing. Now let's get you started on the right foot 
or should I say shoe, with the simple guide to help you embrace the loafer life. Step one, find the perfect fit. Before slipping on your first pair of loafers, it's crucial that you find the perfect fit. Loafers should be snug, but not uncomfortably tight. Remember you're aiming for a confident stride, not a wobbling hobble. So take your time, try on different sizes, and don't hesitate to ask someone for assistance. As well as consider as many different brands and as many different lasts as you can. Our feet are all different, and every brand has a different approach to the way that they shape their lasts or the way that they shape their shoes. You'll want to work to find the brand or the last that suits your natural foot shape as best as possible to provide the most comfortable fit. Some brands are known for their narrower fits, some brands are known for their wider fits, and even under each brand they'll have narrower or wider lasts, for example. It's worth exploring and it, your feet will definitely thank you for doing so. Step two is embracing versatility. One of the best things about loafers is their versatility. They can effortlessly transition from a formal office to a casual weekend brunch, pairing them with tailored trousers or rolled up chinos or jeans. It's all about adapting the loafers to your personal style, not trying to force a new style upon yourself. Just think about how it will work into your wardrobe. Step three, experimenting with style. Loafers come in a variety of different styles, each with its own unique flip. From classic penny loafers to tassel loafers to suede driving loafers, there's a pair out there that will speak to your inner style. Start with something classic and timeless like a penny loafer in a rich dark brown or maybe even black. And once you've mastered the art of loafing, feel free to explore other styles and, and maybe add a bit of pizzazz to your shoe collection. Step four, socks or no socks. It's an age old question and that really depends on the vibe you're going for. They can be worn both ways, both with socks or without socks or with no show socks. Each choice lends it to a distinct style or personality that you're trying to go for. Going sockless is more laid back, summery, and it's perfect for warmer days or more casual days. On the other hand, if you're going with a suit or a formal pair of trousers, then definitely socks is probably the way to go. Step five, last but definitely not least, is to wear your loafers with confidence. The key to wearing anything is just owning it and making it a part of your style. Embrace the comfort, the style, and the sophistication that loafers bring to your ensemble. A little slogan that I used to say in high school was confidence is key, and that remains true. Ultimately, my goal here today is to share the love that is a comfortable pair of loafers. As I often find myself saying, they're just a pair of slippers that I'm allowed to wear outdoors. They're peak comfort, they age and patina, they mold to my feet, and they just look super cool. Hopefully after today, you understand what the hype is about, and maybe, just maybe, you give a pair of loafers a try, because I promise you, you won't regret it. Thanks very much for watching, links out in the description as always. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Cheers.